What is going on you guys? My name is Rage and we are back today with an exciting video on the ultimate free to play beginner farming guide. Uh, something I've already noticed guys in the last few weeks and months going on with this game is that the meta is constantly changing and it's becoming more and more difficult uh, for newer folks coming into the game starting off uh, without guidance in terms of you know which characters and teams to build, uh, which ones to ideally focus, but as well as even just the rationale like why you're building the teams you are right so um end of the day uh this is something i've been trying to build and work towards um but i finally had time to finally record this so i hope you guys enjoy this video on the beginner farming guide that i've created as well as a solution here uh in this video that i can show you guys um something that's gonna be available to everyone um free to play so starting things off guys you know um a little bit about myself uh why trust me why trust rage the gamer here well, first and foremost, guys, I'm 100% free to play. So I come from that beginning where I understand that, you know, there's going to be resources constrained. You got to be efficient and effective in the way you play the game. Otherwise, you're just going to be a spender or potentially a dolphin or a whale, so forth. And you see this with a lot of content creators. Unfortunately, I'm not uh, w willing to bend my, my values and my morals like that just because I'm always about uh, getting value from the game. Especially, I've enjoyed this game from that perspective. It's just something um that's part of who i am and it's it's not gonna ever change how i play the game right so with that mentality in mind it has shaped the way i play strategically um so i think again here youtube is my history if you guys ever want to take a look at my resources and spending and so forth it's all online i've been uh, youtubing for about two years now so you can see my track record my gold balance my power cores uh, the videos I make, it's uh, it's always indicative of my free-to-play aspect and my relatability uh, to the roster. Um, overall now, playing over 190, 150 days, 14 million TCP. So my roster is actually grown quite a bit since I first started the game, right? And I think uh, when I first started recording videos, I was at 400 or 500k in total combat power. So really come a long ways with my progression, but I'll, I've also learned a lot um, through that progression as well. I've gotten all the Dark Dimensions completed. Dark Dimension 5 is pending right now. I just need to finish and edit the videos to put that out there. But yes, guys, um, as of 150 days, all Dark Dimensions completed. Um, Doom 2, uh, excuse me, Doom 3.2 rates, 60% is what we're doing right now. So I also understand the end game in terms of what's required, especially the meta and the teams needed. Um, fortunately, I'm in a very good alliance, but as well, uh, I am uh, playing a, a good part as well in terms of contributing um, to that participation. And lastly, I've been the top 50 in the top 50 to 100 in the arena for the last year and a bit. So, you know, I understand what it takes to be competitive at the same time and, you know, really identifying which teams and metas need to be built with this ever changing game, especially with the updates that, you know, result in very significant changes that result. So overall, guys, that's my portfolio um, and my experience. So hopefully that gives you some comfort that what I'm going to be saying does have weight to the words. Um, next up here, the focus. The focus of this guide is going to be based on resource management and streamlining efficiency. Especially if you're new to the game and if you're going to be also free to play, uh, you also need to be strategic in how you re use resources ultimately, which is going to translate to dividends in the long run as well as the end game. Uh, we want to build quality characters and teams from the early beginning, especially uh, being an end game player like myself. I understand and know which teams and characters are likely going to provide value. But as well as identifying, you know, which ones can you, you know, potentially just invest in for the time being that's going to help transition you to that early mid game. But then you don't need to further invest because they were just a necessary cog piece to really guide you along in your journey. Um, the solution for this, obviously, is going to be a one stop shop uh, for the resources and guides. And that's ultimately my game plan here to show you guys. Um, it's my goal here is to guide you to the end game with clarity and experience. And also, at the time of recording, guys, even if you're watching this video uh, five months from now, six months, maybe a year from now, uh, there's going to be something to tackle that. So I'll address that in the next uh, couple of slides here. But uh, don't worry. If you're watching this video later, um, not to worry. I got you covered. Next up, the challenge. Yeah, as I noted earlier, uh, something that's really frustrating but at the same time exciting is that this game is constantly changing. Uh, you can argue that we have pretty significant updates once a month. And that we have updates pretty much every couple of weeks, especially adding characters and so forth. Uh, three to four characters getting added every month. And then even rework characters and teams ultimately can change the dynamic. You know, more recently, think about the Infinity Watch meta 
that came about the moment they reworked uh, Nebula and Gamora. You know, two characters that people didn't just glanced over. They're becoming two of the most powerful characters, uh, especially in that top tier, top five team uh, with Infinity Watch now. And they still cement themselves there as well, right? So just something, food for thought, right? So the solution, guys, is a one-stop shop, uh, essentially for all these resources and all these guides um, that I will be updating every few weeks or at least once a month. So that way you guys do have the most up-to-date information. Um, and keep in mind too, like uh, if I have more time, obviously I can update that more frequently. But um, I've just seen so many countless uh, videos and threads going up asking and I, it, it completely frustrates me because I want to help, but I can't help. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this video as well as making the guide because um, every time someone's on Reddit posting and asking for help, you know, I, I wish I can actually, uh, you know, besides the one post that I can, you know, solve their issue, I can reply back, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's always frequently asked. It's always frequently occurring because uh, the more players this game attracts, the more likely they're going to be confused and wondering and seeking direction and how to navigate. And that's really what's driven me to, to create this resource, right? So um, that's, this is for you guys, again, uh, ultimately for the newer players, free to play, um, as well as those transitions to mid game and needing help to actually get to the end game. So. Uh, lastly guys, I keep touching on this over and over, but I'm going to explain now in further detail what I mean by this. The one-stop shop. So, I still have my OG, my original minimum guides on the campaigns, um, which become a very significant component of the PvE aspect of the game, as you'll see, right? And more specifically, the most difficult sections include heroes, villains, and the Doom chapters. So, I still have my minimum guides on there. Um, they're going to be able to give you at least video references. Yes, some of the characters may be outdated, but... Uh, keep in mind, the strategy still applies, you know, the attack order and so forth. And some of the characters that previously were not useful before may have been reworked since then. And that's going to be able to at least kind of visualize and help you assist in that unlock. More importantly, when I did these unlock guides with the minimum, they're called minimum because I really tried to minimize the total investment in specific characters and teams. So that way you can see visually how much total combat power is required. You know, uh, when you have uh, larger content creators with very built teams and they show you a guide on YouTube or even just showing on Reddit, it's difficult to relate to because sometimes they can just one shot everybody. But maybe you're maybe you're a player like me when you're starting out and you actually had difficulties trying to unlock these stages. Uh, and that's why I captured it. I'm really glad I captured it at such an early age uh, in, in my progression of the game because um, I thought it was going to add value, and sure enough, it's actually held up and constantly added value, especially my Doom Chapter videos. So I have that linked available, guys. Um, I also have my original Dark Dimension 3, my Dark Dimension 4, uh, actually even Dark Dimension 2, um, all update, all um, cataloged and actually archived in my one-stop shop as well for all the guides. Um, this is going to give you a reference point for everything, um, and as well, what's ongoing right now is my Dark Dimension 5. I, I do believe I only have two or three notes left. To actually just document and publish otherwise just finish up the editing there but that's everything guys that's everything through dark dimension i'm going through the challenges guides right now because they last week they recently released new challenges so that way you can see visually um what these new guides and um these new characters can can assist you with in terms of ultimately unlocking those difficulty to four difficulty five and that gives you some uh further resources but lastly guys, um, what I'm adding to this one-stop shop finally is the ultimate beginner farming guide. So this is something I constantly reached out to. And by the way guys, if you don't know where this is, um, in every one of my videos, it's just the first link in the description below. So this one-stop shop, I've just put it on in all my videos, um, regardless if it's older videos, it's gonna link you to the same spreadsheet that's gonna have access to all of these guides. Because again, I just wanted to become a one-stop shop where you're starting off, you just need one resource to go through. You can see the attack order. Um, you can see the dark dimension progress. You can see the challenges. And next up, you can even see now the ultimate beginner farming guide, which is really going to walk you through which characters you should be locked in on and focused on farming, um, respectively, in each aspect of the game. So finally, um, the ultimate farming guide. So this is the path to the end game, guys. Um, and again, um, this is intended to streamline and assist in resource management. I've added comments to characters used in the end game, so please watch for this. Anything with the red is basically characters you can build right away, uh, and they're actually used in the end game, so you, you can feel good about investing them. Um, so I'll just break it down real quick, guys, because this is just a screenshot of what's in my spreadsheet, but obviously the detail you can always go through. But 
yeah, let's break it down. I've separated each area in different sections of the game. So this top, um, this top section is all for the campaign notes. This is for the Blitz store. We got our raid store below, the arena, and then the war store. But the war store won't be applicable to later on when you're actually further along in your journey, right? But um, the rationale, guys, I've added my rationale from the end game perspective because you need to understand which characters are actually used in the end game, but as well as the reason why we're even recommending them in the first place. So even if we just walked through this first example, guys, everything that's relating to this campaign section, Yondu, um, you can find him in Heroes 2 6. His traits are Villain, Cosmic, and Mystic. And you'll find that certain traits are bolded or capitalized because I'm letting you know that they're actually used in other aspects of the game later on. Um, and that's why they're needed there. And that's specifically also why I kind of highlighted it like that. Now, the rationale. This is the most important aspect, guys, because it really kind of lets you, gives you a sneak peek perspective of what I'm thinking and why I actually re would recommend farming this character. Um, Yondu, because he's an endgame Scourge and World Fence team. Um, he's a great transition to the mid end game. He's going to assist you in campaigns and raids. And ultimately, he unlocks a legendary in Star Lord. Now, Star Lord himself, he's not great, actually. But Star Lord later on, you're going to see that he's used in, in the Nowhere Heist uh, Flash event. So there's a little things like that that you just won't be aware of. But I put these comments in there because later on, just trust me, these are going to form really a very strong quality roster for you as you go through. And here's the best part, guys. I've actually personally gone through my roster to even assess how far you should build some of these characters. So, for instance, the next line here, Mysterio. You know, everybody knows Mysterio. If you're an endgame character, excuse me, endgame player like me, you know Mysterio is not going to add value in the endgame. But how are you going to know that as a beginner and new player? You won't know that, right? So, um, that's what I mean. Mysterio campaign, you can find him Heroes 2, 3, or the Raid Store. And I've added him to Villain uh, City traits, but... You can see here in my rationale, transition to mid game, he's going to actually add value in the villains campaign, especially when you're starting off and you need to just get through as many um, nodes as possible. That's really the focus, right? Um, he can also unlock two legendaries in Invisible Woman and Shuri. And lastly, I've gone through personally to my roster and, you know, keep in mind, 14 million TCP, 950 days plus played. How high did I actually bring him up um, to get to where I am? Well, yeah, levels 55, tier 9. So that's value right there. Um, what that means basically is that you guys can stop investing in them afterwards because if I got to this far this far in the game, free to play, and I, I've unlocked pretty much 90, 95% of the, all the aspects of the game, and I only brought him to level 55 and tier nine, you know, there's no need for you guys to further invest in that material and gear as well. Um, so that's my logic, guys. Anytime you see a character you're not sure about, any character that doesn't say end game, they're gonna have something labeled on there um, even for this last one here, um, this is a great example, Wasp. You know, I, I recommended Wasp as a farmable character there because she's available as a villain character, 4-9. Um, but I actually put her in there because she's required for one of the better legendaries in the game, being Jubilee. And I even added the note, no need to level. You can, you only need to invest in Ghost, as Ghost can solo unlock Jubilee anyway. So you're not going to need to invest in the pin tech later. And again, you just won't know this as a newer player and a mid-tier player because of the lack of experience. And that's what I'm hoping to simulate here, guys. I've really kind of, you know, put myself in your shoes. If I was to reset this game, how would I attack this game? And that's really what I've done here. I've added everything here. Anything that's in different colors, like the red for Endgame or purple in the Scourge, um, that's all relating to Endgame, guys. So that's just stuff for good to you for you to know right now. Uh, and later on, you're going to appreciate these little comments. But... I also wanted to say, guys, um, you know, by grouping this by campaign, blitz store, raid store, arena, war, it's going to be able to help you kind of focus in on, hey, what's my focus today? You know, after I'm done farming this character in the blitz, in the blitz store, who's next, right? It's just going to give you a, con a sequential order here in terms of what to expect and how to farm and as well how high to bring these characters up if they're not actually needed in the end game. So uh, next up, guys, I just want to switch over now finally to each of my phases. That was phase one, right, uh, as the new beginner. Um, each of my phases also have a summary, so it kind of captures like what you've accomplished but as well as your focus on leveling. So the summary for phase one, we now have accomplished. If, if you follow the guide correctly, uh, you ultimately would have unlocked 10 plus heroes for campaign consisting of many end game valuable characters. So that's really good. You have all the starting pieces. It's about building and unlocking all these characters in the beginning. You don't necessarily need to bring them up just yet. Uh, you're also going to get access to seven plus villains, uh, strong ones that are worth investing are, and I've labeled that here, right? Yondu, Nebula, 
Baron Zemo, they can enlist, assist you greatly in the mid to late game. Uh, and again, you just won't know that when you take a look at an infographic and it shows you which characters to build, but you know, how high do you build them? And, and are they really used in the end game? You just won't know that. It's something that you need to have dialogue on. And that's exactly why I've documented the way it's done. Um, yes, it's a lot of information to go through, guys, but um, really pinpoint yourself on which characters you need to unlock first and understand the rationale of how high you need to bring them or level them up with. And at, last but not least, with each of my summaries, I've also added this area where it's called the focus on leveling section. And that's really just adding the priority listing, right? Uh, in this beginning aspect, you know, I've listed characters here that should be a priority because uh, one, I've assessed kind of the value they're going to bring as you transition from the phases that you progress through in the guide. And second of all, where they translate to in the end game. So even a powerful character like Baron Zemo, he's a top priority in the beginning stage. As you can see, I've noted that he's needed later for Villains Chapter 7 and Doom Chapter 2. But even for myself, I only ever brought him to level 71 in Gear Tier 13. So uh, he was still excellent value right there. Um, I'm just letting you guys know that, um, you know, there is a stopping point that you can utilize. You can always feel free to invest in more if you like the character. Obviously, I encourage it, but this is kind of what's worked for me and how it's kind of translated to my success and my progression, guys. So keep in mind, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do this, but um, there's definitely ways to streamline the efficiency, especially when we know that this is a resource management game, which means we need to be effective and we need to streamline resources, especially if you're free to play. Uh, Castro and Deathpool, um, the second priority, God tier level characters used in all game modes, invest fully. If you see the word invest fully, it means you can bring them up as high as you want. Because I'm telling you right now, if you get access to these characters, uh, they are going to absolutely change your gameplay experience. You know, I've added other characters as well, like Shang-Chi, Squirrel Girl, Spider-Man, Miles. Um, all God tier characters really early in the game, especially um, early in the game. Their value is going to be even more. But as you bring them up, you can see they're going to carry specific areas of the game. Um, they can be used in the end game. And like I said earlier, guys, um, it, it, I'm looking at this now and wishing I had something like this when I was going through because... I definitely was really confused when I started off and thankfully my alliance was the ones that were actually the resources for me and really helped me push um, towards understanding as well as identifying you know which characters and teams should be built over the characters and teams that aren't used anymore. So uh, there you guys have it. The one stop shop overview summary of everything I have there and again guys um, just to go back to my earlier point um, this has everything for the campaigns everything for the dark dimensions the challenges and finally now the ultimate beginner farming guide available in the link in the description below the first link so i hope this is able to help you guys i hope this is able to translate to more streamlining your resources and management um i definitely created more and added more focus on the initial three phases as opposed to the last phase because a lot of things can change but again my promise to you guys is i'm gonna try to keep this updated every couple of weeks at least once a month but if there's significant changes you bet i'm going to be revising that because at the end of the day um, i want to make sure that you guys have the most up to date and always check the date in the top left guys i'm going to add a little date stamp there so that way you can see visually when was the last time that was updated and obviously at this point august 9th so uh hope you enjoyed this quick and brief video overall for the ultimate farming guide thank you for your time as always guys i hope this helps please share the love please send the link out i just want to help out all the newer folks and make game players out there Thank you as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.